Now, here's your voice for the Glasgow Scotties, Joe Myers. Hello, everybody. Welcome here to Glasgow High School for a little high school softball action for today here inside the 15th District of the Glasgow Lady Scotties. Host the Allen County Scottsville Lady Patriots. Joe Myers and Bruce Tribune along with you for the broadcast. Lady Patriots coming into this ball game at 7-3 and three on the year. They have played one district game so far, and that was a 13-3 loss to Barron County. Last time uh, Allen County took the field, it was yesterday afternoon as they defeated Logan County by a final score of one to nothing there in Scottsville. Lady Scotties one and four so far. They uh, played their first game in over a week yesterday, and they lost here at home to Franklin Simpson by a final score of 15 to nothing. Let's take a quick timeout. We'll come back and uh, we'll get Bruce here talk about the matchup. We'll give you the starting lineups, and we'll be set to go here on the uh, Don Franklin Auto countdown. The first pitch. We are back after a two-minute timeout here on WCOD Sports. At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. We're celebrating. This is Cynthia Watson with Monticello Bank, and this year we celebrate our 125th anniversary. Since 1895, we've dedicated ourselves to providing premier financial products and superior customer service. The same dedication to superior service that has made us successful in 1895 is still with us today. But our success could not be possible without you, our faithful customers. So we thank you and hope you will join us in celebrating our 125th anniversary. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC. The wake up early, do a little studying, take the dog out, finish that audio book until the very end. Finish that workout, then stop by McDonald's for breakfast and somehow manage to do it all before that 10 a.m. meeting meal. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. Pair our delicious hash browns with the sweet and savory taste of a sizzling sausage McGriddles or a crispy chicken McGriddles for only $2. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. SCRTC is a family. Your family. We come from your community. SCRTC is dedicated to providing the most up-to-date services for over 70 years now. SCRTC fiber technology is constantly expanding, offering up to one gig of internet speed. We started with phone and still provide reliable services for residential and large businesses. We offer over 125 TV channels and provide security, surveillance, remote entry, and managed Wi-Fi. SCRTC continues to grow and make our community better. Call SCRTC today and let us serve your family and business. You're listening to Countdown to First Pitch on WCLU Radio. Now, back to more. Pitcher is... Back here at uh, Glasgow High School where the Lady Scotties are about to take on the Allen County Scottsville Lady Patriots. And uh, let's make a quick change here, Bruce, before I forget. Allen County Scottsville's new pitcher apparently is going to be uh, 25. Sorry we're having to do this on the air here, but uh, Coach Bonds just told me that. Um, so Addison Osbrooks was going to be the designated player, Bruce, but it looks like apparently she's going to pitch now according to what uh, Coach Bonds just told me there. So... Softball, baseball, a little different than uh, basketball and football. They kind of make last-minute changes sometimes. So I uh, think we've got that good to go now. But anyway, Bruce, the Lady Scotties uh, took spring break off. They did not play any games. Uh, came back yesterday, lost 15 nothing to Franklin Simpson. Obviously not the way they wanted to do it. But I talked to Coach Crow, uh, you know, before we went on the air here. He said, look, he said, you know, we just had a couple bad innings. He said we played good for two innings, played bad for two innings. And that's just what you're going to get out of a team that's uh, – comprised the majority uh, ma- uh, of the majority of middle schoolers. Uh, Ten of the 17 kids on the roster are middle school players for this Glasgow ball club. Well, and and, and, and the older players that are playing are, are only, uh, well, one or two of them's got a little experience at all. I mean, Heidi Jackson played some, you know, before 
you know, she she was playing a little but, uh, before the pandemic came along. And then also Ellery Haynes, you know, was on the team, you know, ran some. and, and But that, that's only two players that got any varsity experience at all. Allen County Scottsville, 7-3 and three on the year. They are coached by Brad Bonds. And uh, ACS Bruce has a uh, great tradition of high school softball. They've, uh, the last couple years, probably not been at quite the level that they, that they were used to. But you look at their roster, and they've got a bunch of young kids, too. They start uh, five middle schoolers themselves. So uh, I was talking with one of their assistant coaches. He said, you know, I think everybody's having the same problem, having a hard time getting some kids to come out for softball that, that you would hope would play. Uh, so it's not just at Glasgow. Yeah, I forget who. I can't remember who I was talking to now that said that, you know, after basketball season was over, of course, Coach Bonds was coaching the boys' basketball season, that he went and talked to some of the girls that were that were on the basketball team, you know, and and uh, I, I see a few of them, you know, on the roster that, you know, to come out and play softball. And at one time when I looked at they they, they didn't have any more uh, high school players on their team than we did when I looked at their roster early. And they've talked some, you know, some older girls with some experience to come out. But out of the Warren East, you know, of course, that coaches poll, they were picked preseason number one. And they start a bunch of freshmen. I mean, they're, they're young even, you know, with, except their pitching staff. They've got some pitchers that have, you know, played some. So it's, it's just something that, that happens. You mentioned that new coaches poll or the coaches poll, the new one that came out this week has uh, South Warren and Warren East two and three in the state. Uh, I can't remember exactly which order it is, but I do know they were two and three. And then Barron County uh, is newly ranked at number 21 in the state. Barron County's undefeated so far, but it's having a great year. Well, I think when the season started, it was it was East Warren and, and South Warren too, and and you know so and and, uh, and of course that's a preseason poll, and, and and when they start playing and, and that kind of deal, and you know of course over spring break, Elizabeth Town had a they have a tournament up there, you know at that they've got a park where they can play multiple games and, and they have a tournament up there. It wouldn't surprise me maybe to see them someday get the bid and take the state tournament away from Owensboro because of the central location. It's just so easy for everybody to get there and they've got a wonderful facility up there that they built several years ago and, and and you may see that as, you know, McCracken County is always a good program because that's, that's down there where they had Heath and all those schools that were so good every year when they were, you know, they're just, you know, separate schools. As we continue here on the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to first pitch, let's take a look at the other games going on around the area today. Another softball action. You've got another 15th district contest with Marion County on the road at Monroe County. Cavern at home against Hart County. Metcalf County visiting Cumberland County. And in baseball this afternoon, you've got uh, the Scotties playing a district game as well over at Allen County, Scottsville. Barron County in a district action uh, at Monroe County. Caverna on the road at Hart County. And Metcalf County's baseball team at home today against Russell County. So let's give you the starting lineups for this game between the Lady Scotties and the ACS Lady Patriots. Today's starting lineup is brought to you by Monticello Bank, celebrating over 125 years with 19 locations in 11 counties. For the Allen County Scottsville Lady Patriots, batting first in center field is Hadley Borders. At catcher and batting second is Bailey Osbrooks. Jay McReynolds bat third. She's the left fielder. The cleanup hitter is the shortstop, J.C. Rice, batting in the number five hole. The second baseman, Taylor Gregory. Daisy Wilkerson bats six. She's at first base. Hayden Brown, the third baseman, bats seventh. The number eight hitter is the, the uh, pitcher, Addison Osbrooks. And Danny Eaton uh, will be the number nine hitter in right field. Lady Patriots 7-3 and three on the year, 0-1 oh in the district. Their head coach is Brad Bonds. For the Lady Scotties, batting first and shortstop is Ellery Haynes. Number two hitter is the catcher, Lucy Richardson. Emery Gardner, the third baseman, bats third. Cleanup hitter for the Lady Scotties is the pitcher, Addison McCoy. Batting in the five spot, the second baseman, Heidi Jackson. Abby Elmore, the center fielder, bats six. Number seven hitter, the first baseman, Elena Hewitt. Number eight hitter, Micah Mullenkamp. She's the designated player hitting the day for the left fielder, Tierra Saltzman. And the number nine hitter, for the Lady Scotties is the uh, right fielder, Sydney Kuykendall. Lady Scotties 1-4 and four on the year. This is their first district contest. Their head coach is Caleb Crow. Assistant coaches for Glasgow, Tabitha Elmore, Jason Cook, and Corey Payne. Lady Scotties, uh, of course, have played Monroe County uh, earlier in the year, but that was not a district contest. That was part of the All-A tournament, so first district game of the season here tonight, this afternoon, I should say, for the Lady Scotties. 
And again, those starting lineups brought to you by Monticello Bank, where we make banking easy. Let's take a timeout here, our final timeout, as we wrap up the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to first pitch. And then when we come back, we'll have the first pitch for you here from Glasgow High School. It is the Lady Scotty hosting the Allen County Scottsville Lady Patriots in fast pitch softball. We're back after a three-minute timeout here on WCLD Sports. This has been the Don Franklin Auto Countdown to First Pitch with Joe Myers. A production of WCLU Sports. Coming up, live action on WCLU, 1490 AM at 103.1 FM. Online, WCLURadio.com. I'm Owen Lambert, president of South Central Bank. Whether you're looking for a conventional mortgage, an FHA, or a VA loan, or even a construction loan, or just a loan for that home improvement project you've been thinking about, South Central Bank is ready to help. We have experienced lenders who are here to walk you through every step of the way. You can even start the process online at southcentralbank.com. At South Central Bank, we're small enough to know you and big enough to help. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. That daily grind stuck in an office was never for you. You needed an office that moved, preferably one with 18 wheels, and where the path through the break room changes every day. You're a truck driver. It's in your blood, and you are exactly who we're looking for. Wahlberg Trucking. If you have a Class A CDL license, then we want you. Great pay with a great company and an office view that changes by the minute. Check us out at GoWalbert.com. For information, text CDL to 64636. We're here with the Shrimp Tree. They're playing a gig at Colton's. Here's fried shrimp. What's up? This is grilled lemon pepper shrimp. Hello, ma'am. And grilled Del Rio shrimp. Howdy, partner. How y'all doing? Get the shrimp trio now at Colton's Steakhouse and Grill and enjoy Tangler's rice and a side. Colton's Steakhouse and Grill, serving you in Glasgow, Campbellsville, Radcliffe, and Bardstown. We know what's at stake in shrimp, too. It's t- t- time for Glasgow Scotty Softball on your home for local WCLU, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM and online at WCLURadio.com. WCLU Sports brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Monticello Bank, the Glasgow Electric Plant Board, Joe Myers, Kentucky Farm Bureau, BG Tire, McDonald's of Glasgow, Colton Steakhouse, South Central Rural Telephone, South Central Bank, Walbert Trucking, and the People's Bank. Now, the voice of Glasgow Sports, Joe Myers. Back here at Glasgow High School, it is the Lady Scotties hosting the Allen County Scottsville Lady Patriots. Here at Rick and Kaiser Field at Bush Stadium, Joe Myers and Bruce Tribune along with you for the broadcast as Glasgow's Addison McCoy finishing her warm-up tosses right now. Lady Scotty's in white jerseys with blue numerals and letters. Says Glasgow across the uh, front of the jersey. They got the blue pants with the uh, white socks and the blue stripes around the top of the socks. Allen County Scottsville in red jerseys with blue letters and numerals outlined in white gray pants with a red stripe down the side of the unis. Red socks for the uh, Lady Patriots. Good day for softball here. Started out as kind of a rainy day this morning, although it was a light rain, so there was really never any threat of this ball game being canceled or anything like that. But turned into a nice afternoon. We've got uh, pretty much almost an overcast day. Certainly a cloudy day, you could say. And we are set to go here as Hadley Border steps in to the left-handed batter's box to get us going today. We'll get the first pitch of the afternoon coming from Addison McCoy. And the fastball misses low and away for ball one. Addison, eighth grader. Facing a seventh grader in Borders at the plate. Borders, an outstanding start to her season, batting 621 with three RBIs. And this pitch misses low and away as well, just about the same spot as the first one did. It's 2 0 now. (laughs) 
I welcome those of you who may be watching us on the uh, Scotty channel on our YouTube live stream. Well, and this pitcher called a strike at the knees, two and one. He took time to call it. I thought for a minute that it, I thought, man, that looked like a good pitch. <laughs> he did call it a strike, so pardon me. Addison McCoy on here, by the way, one and one with a 1.34 ERA. She has 12 strikeouts and only six walks. That's and that one in there for a call strike evens the count up at two and two now. Same place the last one was. Addison has those numbers in 15 and two thirds innings of work. And McCoy ready for the 2-2 pitch. And this one lifted foul. Will it stay in play? It did, but nobody could get there to it. So this count will remain two balls and two strikes. Emory Gardner there at third base. And the shortstop, Ellery Haynes, were both in the area. But the uh, ball didn't hang up in the air long enough for either of them to get there. Ball came down just in front of the third base dugout there where the Lady Scotties are. So we'll get another 2-2 another pitch here to Borders. And the changeup is fouled off out of play to the right side this time into the Island County Scottsville fans. And a good catch made over there. Is that, uh, that's James McReynolds over there. Yeah, did he catch it? He did. No, the one behind him. I guess that's his question. Coach McReynolds, uh, Glasgow assistant football coach, assistant principal here at the high school, but he is a graduate of Island County Scottsville. He knows all those folks over there, I'm sure. Another 2-2 pitch coming. And this one misses upstairs. Looks like a rise ball that time maybe from McCoy. 3-2 the count now. So McCoy trying to avoid walking her first hitter of the day here in the opening at bat. Payoff pitch is fouled straight back. Well, Borders is going to look at her ninth pitch here. So... McCoy takes a look at her wristband to make sure she has the right pitch. And she winds and delivers. And this one hit hard in the left center field. That's going to get to the gap to the fence. It'll be extra bases for Borders. And she's on her way to second base. They're going to wave her around to third. Here's the throw. It's cut off by the shortstop Hanks. The throw to third is not in time. It's a leadoff triple for Hadley Borders. And that is a perfect example of why that young lady is hitting 621 on the year to start the season. Yep. Got a good bat on it and hit it right in the gap. Now to bring up the catcher, Bailey Osbrooks. Osbrooks, a uh, very good start to the season as well. She's a junior batting 567. She has 15 RBIs and does have a home run on the year. McCoy with her first pitch of the bat. It's a fastball in there for a call strike. Nice crowd on hand here for this uh, 15th district contest. Osbrook sets up way up in the front of the box, and this pitch misses off the plate outside. Even the count up at one ball and one strike. McCoy toes the rubber. And the 1-1. Change up. Misses a bit low. Yeah, if Osbrooks is, you know, as far up as she is in the box, if she strides it all, she's going to be out of the box almost. I... She does set up way up in the front of the box. The 2-1 here is laced into right field. That'll be a base hit. It'll get a run in. And it's going to get past uh, Kuykendall to the fence out there in right field. Osbrook's on her way to third base, and she'll be there standing up. The first two hitters of the day with base hits for Allen County Scottsville, and they have a one nothing lead. And we'll get a courtesy runner for Osbrooks at third base, and that is going to be Addison Law running for her at third. Target for left fielder now, Jay McReynolds. Okay. 
He's a left-handed hitter. And the first pitch to her misses maybe a bit low. Looked pretty good. Looked like it was over the plate. Must have been a little bit low. 1-0. Rick Reynolds batting 481 with 10 RBIs. She has a home run as well. One of two seniors in the lineup for the Lady Patriots. And this one hit hard to left field. That's going to be trouble, and that's going to bounce in front of the fence. So the courtesy runner, Law, coming in to score, and McReynolds will wind up at third base. And Allen County Scottsville hitting the ball hard here to start this contest. All three of the first three hitters have ripped balls into the outfield. And time called here as Glasgow assistant coach Jason Cook goes out to talk to his team. All the infielders fielders gather around there in the pitching circle. It's a 2 nothing Allen County Scottsville lead. What are you looking for, Bruce? Oh, I don't help you with that name. No, oh, I, was, okay. I had her number down, but I never had written her name down. J.C. Rice, the hitter uh, next due up for Allen County Council once the uh, meeting is over in the preaching circle, which it is now. 2 nothing Allen County Council. Jay McReynolds on at third base. Nobody out here in the top of the first inning. Double for the leadoff hitter, a single with an no error. Triple. Oh, sorry, I thought, error. Oh, sorry, I thought that said second base. No, it's a triple. Got you. Okay. So a triple for the leadoff hitter and a single with an error for Bailey Osbrooks, who batted second. Jay McReynolds has a triple. And we'll see what J.C. Rice does here at the play. He pops one up on the infield. This should be out number one. Well, no, it won't be. Ball's going to be dropped out there at first base. Atlanta Hewitt and Heidi Jackson were both right there. And they didn't communicate. That's youth. And it's yep. like you say, the second baseman should call off the first baseman because she was coming in on the ball. Yep. And then that's just, that's just things you've got to do, Joe. And so that's the second error of the inning. And that will bring in uh, McReynolds from third base. It's now 3 nothing Allen County, Scottsville. Now, Betty, Here's second baseman Taylor Gregory. Gregory batting 560 on the year with 14 RBI. And the first pitch to her in there for a strike, I believe. A throw down to second base as the runner takes off and the runner in there safely. The stolen base for Rice. It was called a strike, so it's a 0-1 count. Yeah, Richardson with good throw, but she sort of double pumped it before she let it go. And it was it was a close play, but McCoy with the pitch, change up, misses low. One ball, one strike to the sophomore second baseman for Allen County Scottsville, Taylor Gregory. The pitch from McCoy is hit hard. That'll be a base hit in the center field. That's going to get to the fence as well. That's going to bring another run in for Allen County Scottsville as Rice crosses the plate to make it 4 0. Still nobody out here in the top of the first. Here's the first baseman, Daisy Wilkerson. So catcher Lucy Richardson went out to have a quick word with McCoy. Wilkerson, the other senior in the lineup with McReynolds. Wilkerson batting 526, eight RBI. She has two home runs on the year. Fastball in there for a strike from McCoy. Everybody in this ACS lineup hitting at least 333 on the season. The top seven hitters are hitting at least 407 or better. It's a dangerous offensive lineup here for Lady Patriots. And the pitch here by McCoy fouled back. Strike two. Yeah, ten games in. That's, that's not bad. You know, and <laughs> team average for Allen County Scottsville, 450. My goodness. The 0-2 is found back. 
as uh, Wilkerson got just enough of it to stay alive there. Wind is blowing out. If you get one up in the air, it may help it a little bit. Blowing out towards left center field. O2 pitch in the dirt, and that bounced way in front of home plate. Made it tough on Richardson to try to get her body in front of it to stop it from going to the backstop. She was not able to, and so that puts the runner over at third base now. Taylor Gregory at third with Wilkerson at the plate. Already a 4 nothing lead for Allen County Scottsville. A 1-2 count to Wilkerson. Still nobody out. And change up here from McCoy. Floats in there high for ball two. Uh, Addison Oz Brooks is the pitcher, and Bailey Oz Brooks is the catcher. Well, that's an A Oz and one that got a C Oz Brooks on this. I don't think so. I was writing those down. It's, it's a 2 2, and this one popped up on the infield, and that will be caught by the shortstop, Keller, Ellery Haynes, for out number one here in the first. Gonna bring up the third baseman, Hayden Brown. Brown batting 500 with nine RBIs. She's just an eighth grader. And the pitch from McCoy misses up and away for ball one. And we all know just how young this Lady Scotty Ball Club is with 10 of their 17 varsity players being middle schoolers. But it's a quite a young Lady Patriots Ball Club as well. Five of their starters in the lineup here are middle schoolers themselves. Two seventh graders, three eighth graders. Here's the 1-0. And this one hit hard to center field coming in on it. And making the catch out there is Abby Elmore. The runner will tag from third base and score. I thought I must appeal that. I thought she left early myself. Of course, it's supposed to be automatic. Oh, she and they did, yeah. You know, Caleb Crow did appeal it. They asked the umpire, and uh, they said the runner did leave early. So that is the, out, uh, the third out of the inning. So it will end with Allen County Scottsville holding a lead, but uh, the Lady Scotties uh, yet to come to bat. Four runs, four hits, two errors, and nobody left on base. We finished a half inning. Allen County Scottsville four. The Lady Scotties coming to the bat. We'll return after this one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Life has a way of presenting us with many inconveniences, but paying your bills shouldn't be one of them. That's why the Glasgow EPB has multiple ways to pay your bill. You can pay your bill online or even sign up for our bank draft program, where your bill will be debited from your bank account on the due date. Pay your bill anytime without having to come into our office at the bill payment kiosk located next to our drive through Did you know you can pay your EPB bill at your bank? And as always, our office and drive through are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The EPB, connecting Glasgow to the future. At Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local communities. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. Don Franklin Family of Dealerships, we are Kentucky. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. Back here at Glasgow High School, we go to the bottom of the first inning with Allen County Scottsville holding a 4 to nothing lead. And the first three hitters do have four of the Lady Scotties. In the bottom of the first, Ellery Haynes, Lucy Richardson, and Emery Gardner. As, uh, we can confirm that the uh, Allen County Council pitcher is Addison Osbrooks. Initially, it was going to be Allie Anderson when we were given the lineup, so I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, Addison Osbrooks will be the pitcher today for ACS. And we look at uh, her numbers. She is uh, 1-0 and on the year with an 11.31 ERA. She has struck out six and walked four. 
but they can rotate her in though because she was a flex player. You see, you know, they can put her in into that Anderson, Allie Anderson. She yeah, but I, she's not going to be anymore because Ostrooks was the designated player, so now she's the pitcher. Well, they've so, got a flex, so right, and a flex player, and you don't have to take Allie. But they don't have a flex player in the lineup anymore. Because Osbrook, excuse me, Anderson was going to be the flex player. She's no longer pitching. So I think I understand. I think I understand. No, I think the flex player, she can. Okay, either way, it doesn't matter. Here's Ellery Haynes at the plate, and her first pitch misses upstairs for ball one. Haynes batting 357 on the year with two RBI. The 1-0 on the way from Osbrooks, and that one misses upstairs, 2-0. Haynes hits from the left side. One of three freshmen in the lineup for the Ladies Scotties. Osbrooks ready for the 2-0. And this one hitting the air to left field and coming on and making the catch out there is Jay McReynolds. That's not Jay McReynolds. So they've made a change defensively as well. I think that was number seven when she turned around. Is that's that right? Anderson. That's a flex player. Okay, there you go. All right, so that's what they've done. They put her in left field instead of pitching. McReynolds. You can do anything you want to with that flex player. I understand. I'm just trying to see if McReynolds is out there. So no, that's not her. She is not. I know I know she's not left field. I'm no, I don't, I don't see her anywhere. Somewhere. I don't see her anywhere. Okay, so McReynolds is a designated player now. All right, now we've got it all figured out. The pitch from Rossbrooks here misses upstairs. It's 1-0. Lucy Richardson, the hitter for the Lady Scotties. Sometimes we have to do things on the fly in spring sports, baseball and softball, either make last minute changes and we don't get told a lot of everything that goes on, so just have to figure it out as we go. This pitch from Ostrooks in there for a call strike, it's one and one. It's like saying basketball when somebody comes in, they got a report and we see that and in football you can run people in and out anywhere. So. Right. <laughs> Swing and a miss by Richardson here. Like a change up from Paul Sprooks. Count goes to one and two. Lucy hitting 385 on the year with two RBI. Richardson awaiting the one two. Osbrooks finds and delivers. And change up stays high. Henry Gardner do up next for the Lady Scotties. Osbrook's on the rubber, and the 2-2 pitch is grounded to the shortstop, Rice. She'll charge, go to first base, and the out is made there for out number two. Now the third baseman, Emory Gardner. Emory hitting 143 on the year with a couple of RBIs. She's an eighth grader. Osbrooks lets out a grunt as she delivers that fastball in there for a call strike. She grunts on most of her pitches. Talked about uh, the uh, Lady Patriots having a team batting average of 450. Just for comparison's sake, Lady Scotty's team average 259. The 0 1 from Moss Brooks. This is low on inside. What the pitcher's a seventh grader and the catcher's a junior, but they they look like twins. They're about the same size. And this one fouled off by Gardner. Got just a piece of it. Oh. 
One ball and two strikes to Gardner. And the pitch from Rossbrook's on the way. Change up, hit to left field, and that'll be a sliding catch there made by let's see, uh, Allie Anderson out there in left field. A good catch by her to end the inning for the ladies. Got to go quietly here in the first. No runs, no hits, no runs. Nobody left. After one complete, Allen County Scottsville 4, Glasgow 0. We'll be right back after this one minute timeout on WCLU Sports. This is Terry Bunnell with the People's Bank. Serving our community is our top priority. We are your hometown friend and financial partner. As a community bank, we strive to make banking a relationship, not a transaction. Our focus is clearly on you. We're local people, helping local people. At the People's Bank, let us work for you. People's Bank, working for you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. In a perfect world, tree limbs never fall on roofs during storms. Deer look both ways before crossing the road. And water pipes don't burst while you're on vacation. But for those times when life is less than perfect, Kentuckians turn to Kentucky Farm Bureau Insurance, a company perfectly suited to getting your world back to okay. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Come see me, Joe Myers, at 106 Reynolds Road in Glasgow or call me at 670-3093. Welcome back to more sports action on WCLU Radio with Joe Myers. Back here at uh, Glasgow High School as we have Allen County Scottsville leading the Lady Scotties here in fast pitch softball, 4 to nothing. As we start the uh, top of the second inning, it'll be the 8, 9, and 1 here is due up for Allen County Scottsville. Addison Osbrooks, Danny Eaton, and Hadley Borders are those 8, 9, and 1 hitters. As we'll see Addison McCoy begin her second inning of work for Glasgow out there in the pitching circle. ACS pitcher in there to uh, get us going here in the top of the second. Addison Osbrook's batting 333 with four RBI. And a good pitch by McCoy to strike the bat as Osbrook swings through what looks like an off speed pitch maybe for strike one. Osbrook's one of two seventh graders in the uh, batting order today for ACS. And McCoy tries to come with a change up here that misses upstairs. One and one. Well, from the time when by the time her bat's over, they're gonna call more dirt out and put in the battery box. She's digging it out, isn't she? Yes, she does. And this ball hit into short center field and making the catch. Is Abby Elmore. Abby had a long way to run right there to get to it. I thought Haynes and Shortstop might actually have a better play on it, but a good job there by Elmore to get to the spot and make the catch route number one. And I bring up the right gooder, Danny Eaton. Eaton way up in the batter's box as well. Probably a slapper, but she's not going to slap, though. She'll be in the back of the box, but she's bullshit. And the change up here from McCoy misses high. Eating a 348 hitter with seven RBI. We'll tell you these stats that we have for ACS do not include yesterday's game. They were not uh, online yet, so they are missing one game. The 1 0 pitch is high, 2 0. We'll be over at Sam Royce Field on Thursday as the uh, Scotty baseball team hosts Franklin Simpson. Looking forward to our first broadcast from uh, Richardson Stadium there that day. Of course, the one baseball game we've done so far was uh, at Barron County High School. On Thursday, that'll be a 5.30 start against the Wildcats. That last pitch to Eaton was fouled off. Two balls and one strike now. Boy with the 2-1 pitch. And this one's lifted into foul territory, and it's going to drop. 
or just a long strike there for eating two balls, two strikes now. Eating back into the box. And McCoy with the pitch. And this is hot. Right outside as well. Count goes full. Nobody on the base pads here in the top of the second inning. Alex County Scott still leads it four to nothing. One away. And the payoff pitch coming to Danny Eaton, and she will foul it off. Watch out over there in the third base dugout. So another 3-2 pitch. Oi, into her windup. Yeah, that was called strike three right at the letter. That's a nice pitch. First strike out of the day for Addison McCoy. Two away, and now back to the top of the order for Lady Patriots with Hadley Borders. Borders. Borders led off with a triple to the, hit the left field right in the gap between left and center, her first at bat, and then scored. She's a seventh grader, yet she's the best hitter on the team, average-wise, at 621. And this was ripped into right center field, and that is going to be caught. Great catch out there by Abby Elmore. Made a diving catch out there to save what was surely going to be a double, maybe even a triple, by Borders. And ACS goes one, two, three here at the top of the second. And yeah, Abby Elmore had two good catches in that inning, so... Three up and three down for the Lady Patriots. Uh, no runs, no hits, no runs, nobody left. After one and a half, it's still Allen County, Scottsfield, four, Glasgow, zero. We'll be right back after this one minute timeout on WCLU Sports. The wake up early, do a little studying, take the dog out, finish that audio book until the very end, finish that workout, then stop by McDonald's for breakfast and somehow manage to do it all before that 10 a.m. meeting meal. There's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. Pair our delicious hash browns with the sweet and savory taste of a sizzling sausage McGriddles or a crispy chicken McGriddles for only $2. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Been thinking about adding SCRTC service? Well, now is the time. SCRTC is offering installation as low as $31. With internet speeds up to 1 gig, you don't want to wait any longer to start service. And if it's television you want, SCRTC has it with over 100 and 20 channels that can all be yours with the reduced installation fee of $31. Hookup of additional TVs will cost more. Take advantage of SCRTC packages of internet, TV, and phone, or no phone. Call today for more information on SCRTC service and the $31 installation fee. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. We move to the bottom half of the second inning here at Glasgow High Schools. Trying to rig field at Bush Stadium. And four, five, six hitters do up for the Lady Scotties. That's Addison McCoy, Heidi Jackson, and Abby Elmore. Addison Osbrooks, ready to start her second inning of work on the pitching rubber. And then the first pitch of the inning is found straight back, strike one. McCoy, an eighth grader, hitting 333 on the season with a couple of RBI. Brooks taking a long look in now, ready to deliver. The 0-1 and a swing and a miss by McCoy for strike two. Yeah, had her fooled on that one. That chased a bad one. So McCoy back into the box. Looking at a no ball, two strike count. Osbrooks with the pitch. Change up, and that'll be a base hit into right field. 
the leadoff single here for McCoy. First hit for the Scotties tonight. We'll see if Glasgow can get a little something going here in the second. He's trailing four and I think Hottie Jackson, the second baseman, do up next for the Lady Scotty. Jackson, the only upperclassman in the uh, starting lineup today for the Lady Scotty. He's a junior. Hitting 188. Osprey starts with a fastball and misses high. One ball, no strike. Osprey to the pitch. And that one a bit low. Two and oh. You're wondering about McCoy at first base. He does not have a stolen base on the season. But he's got as a team have nine of them. Their leadoff hitter, Ellery Haynes, has six of those nine. This pitch from Ross Brooks is high, so it's now 3 0. Oh. The Jackson, I'm sure, taking all the way here. If Osprey can throw a strike, he cannot. This is high. So four straight pitches, four straight balls. Jackson draws the walk. And that bring up Abby Elmore as Addison McCoy goes to second base. Runners at first and second, nobody out. Yeah, she, after giving up the hit, just four straight balls. <laughs> I might watch one here. Bailey Osbrooks goes out to talk with Addison Osbrooks. We're going to assume they are sisters, but uh, really don't have any. No, we don't, do we? They look alike. They're Bailey a junior and uh, Addison a seventh grader. <laughs> and I'm not sure Addison's not a little taller than the seventh grader when they were standing out there. But... Here's Abby Elmore. The eighth grader steps in here with runners at first and second and nobody out. Glasgow trailing four to nothing, so we're really going to try to get something going here. Take advantage of this opportunity. The first pitch from Osbrook's in there for a call strike. Damn, right center field. They, they are. You know, the girl's got decent velocity. I, 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 you know, that's why I would think I'd be shading more either straight away or, or, or you know... The 0-1 misses inside. I mean, with the velocity of the girls pitching, I wouldn't think we'd pull too many balls. But there she's, you know, she's a good, what, 8, 10 foot left of mid-dead center. Yeah, the fielder is. I mean, she has excellent speed. Of course, you know, her glove hand's on her, on that left side of her body, so. One ball, one strike count to Elmore. Osbrooks with the pitch. Elmore shows blunt, trying to lay it down, but founds it back. I'd probably be playing straight away or protecting the gap. Now, Elmore in a 1 2 hole. You would think the bunt would be off here. Cross Brooks lines and fires. And that one misses outside. Of course, that's the thing. You know, if you square around and bunny, bunny, foul, you're out. But, but in softball, you know, in, in fast pitch, they've got all those slappers, and they stand up there and slap it all day long and slap it foul until they get that pitch they want. You know, if you've got good enough back control. I, I, you, you, of course, you know, on the college level, you, you, you see them do it. I mean, it's just. There's a 2 2. And that one. Oh, oh strike okay. three. I don't know. Just a little high and high outside. So the first out of the inning there on the strikeout by Osbrooks. And that will bring up the first baseman, Elena Hewitt. Oh, you need a base hit, Joe. Hewitt batting 222 on the year with one RBI. And swings and misses at the first offering from Osbrooks.
freshman back into the box. The 0 1 pitch bounces in the dirt. A great block by Bailey Oscars behind the plate to keep the runners put at first and second base. That ball bounced a good five feet in front of the plate. That's a tough play for a catcher to knock that ball down. And it almost hits you. You know, in a bounce pitch like that, you know, it's, it's, it's a hit batter. One ball, one strike. And swing and a miss here at this fastball by Hewitt. One and two. Mossbrook's got to chase one in the dirt that time. Like a mullen camp waiting on deck. There's runners at first and second, one away, and a one two count. The pitch is low. On County Scottsville leads four to nothing in the bottom of the second inning. Two two swung on and missed by Hewitt because she's down on strikes for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up the designated player, Michael Mullen can. Yeah, after getting the first two batters on, the Scotties have been set down by strikeouts the last two. Micah has only had two official plate appearances this year. She's over two. The pitch from Ross Brooks misses upstairs. The one over to Mullen Kent. Also high. Ostrich with the 2 0 now. No one called a strike on the outside part of the plate. Balls and one strike. Osbrooks into the windup. And Mullenkamp hits it on the ground to the first baseman. Wilkerson, she'll scoop it up, step on the bag. And the Lady Scotties will strand a couple of runners here in the second inning. There were no runs, one hit, uh, no errors, two left on base. After two completed in this girls' 15th district contest, it's Allen County, Scottsville, four, Glasgow, zero. We'll return after this timeout on WCOU Sports. One, one minute, minute I'm sorry. One minute timeout on WCOU Sports. Hi, this is Owen Lambert, president of South Central Bank. Whether you're looking for your first home, your next home, or just want to refinance your current home, the experience lenders at South Central Bank are ready to help make it happen. With rates at historic lows, now is the time to act. Apply online today at southcentralbank.com or just give us a call. Our lenders are ready to help you every step of the way. At South Central Bank, we're small enough to know you, but we're big enough to help. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. That daily grind stuck in an office was never for you. You needed an office that moved, preferably one with 18 wheels, and where the path through the break room changes every day. You're a truck driver. It's in your blood, and you are exactly who we're looking for. Wahlberg Trucking. If you have a Class A CDL license, then we want you. Great pay with a great company and an office view that changes by the minute. Check us out at GoWahlberg.com. For information, text CDL to 64636. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. Joe Myers alongside Bruce Review with you here at Glasgow High School. It's a 4 nothing lead for Allen County Scottsville over the Lady Scotties in this 15th district contest here in Fast Pitch Softball. And the two, three, four hitters do up for the Lady Patriots. In the top of the third, it'll be Bailey Osbrooks, Jay McReynolds, and J.C. Price. Osbrooks singled, and we uh, right through her, let a ball get by, and she was able to advance to third on the parrot. 
Osbrooks leads the team with 15 RBI. She bats 567 on the year and does have a home run. Okay, 16 now. She can get an RBI yep, today. That's true. And we don't know if she had any yesterday, but she... <laughs> it was just a one nothing ball game yesterday, so somebody had one, but only the one. And this pitch from McCoy to start the inning misses upstairs, 1-0. And ACS defeated Logan County one to nothing yesterday afternoon. Lady Scotty's had a tough afternoon yesterday, losing 15 nothing to Franklin Simpson in their first game in over a week. They did not play at all during spring break. This pitch to Osbrooks misses as well. It's two and zero. A lot of people go to Florida. I know there are a few teams that went to Myrtle Beach. I don't. I didn't see any scores with Florida, but but there were a lot of stuff going on in the state last week. And Osbrooks tears into this ball, but it is foul. That was an absolute laser. Two balls and a strike. McCoy into the windup. And Osbrook fouls this one off. Ground, uh, grounded foul towards the third base dugout. Played nicely off the wall by Allen County Scott's head coach Brad Bonds there in the third base coach's box. So McCoy now is even the count up at two balls and two strikes. The pitch here bounces in front of the plate, three and two. McReynolds do up next for the Lady Patriots. But first, we'll have a payoff pitch to Osbrooks. McCoy with the pitch, and that misses low, so Osbrooks draws the leadoff ball here to start the third. Just the first wall given up by McCoy. And courtesy runner once again for Osbrooks there at first base, and that will be Addison Law. Law now. Jay McReynolds, the ACS hitter. RBI triple, her first at bat. She hit one into the left center field cap. McReynolds bats from the left side. She's about as far back in the box as you could possibly be. She may slap. Squares to bunt, pulls back and takes a called strike, and Law will have a stolen base at second, as Richardson did not even attempt to throw. to McReynolds. McCoy with the pitch. In there for a call strike on the outside corner. 0-2. McReynolds a 481 hitter. Does have a home run on the year. But she's in an 0-2 hole here. Pitch from McCoy. This is inside. Mm, boy, that's a nice pitch. I think mean, she twisted it back, but she crowded the plate. That 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 was a pretty good looking pitch. It might have been the river, but so one and two. McCoy fires away. Change up here. McReynolds waits on it and fouls it back out of play. One ball, two strikes. The pitch from McCoy grounded to second base. Jackson has it, goes to first base for the out. Long goes from second to third on the play. That ball is hit to the right side. So essentially a bunt there by McReynolds. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, J.C. Rice. She created her eyes for each on an error her first time up back in the first inning. Oh. 
Sorry, I had a tickle there. She she reached on a, a pop up. Uh, it was Price tried to lay a bunt down here, but found it off. That was misplayed by the first baseman. And... Ball was not coming from third base that time, so Price could just kind of bunt for a hit there. Price, a 407 hitter with eight RBIs, one home run on the year. The 0 1, and again, she'll lay down a bunt. This time, Law does try to come home and score, and the Lady Scotty's not ready for it. Lucy Richardson uh, had lost her concentration there at the pitcher, and uh, the uh, pitcher, McCoy, had the softball and, was, and threw it to Richardson, but she was not ready to cover the plate. And so that'll be another run scored by ACS. It's 5 nothing, Allen County, Scottsville now. As Rice reaches first base on the fielder's choice, and Taylor Gregory will be the hitter. Yeah, they would have had a play. Probably would have been out. Gregory batting 560 on the year. And this one in there for a call strike. The runner takes off her second base. She's in there safely. That's Rice now at second base. That's her second stolen base of the afternoon. Third of the Lady Patriots. Gregory doubled and RBI double. No ball, one strike count to her. The pitch from McCoy is a bit high. <laughs> McCoy ready for the 1-1. One, one. And here it is. And it's fly to right field, coming in and making the catch. It's Sydney Kuykendall. We're going to try to tag, and she will make it. Gregory goes from second to third on the play. Or that's Rice. I'm sorry. Rice goes from second to third. Gregory just flew out. And that'll bring up Daisy Wilkerson. Two away now here in the four of the third. Five nothing lead for Allen County Scottsville. Wilkerson leads the team with two home runs, 526 average. McCoy's pitching there for a call strike. Good fastball there to start the at-bat right at the knees. So she doubled. Advanced to third on a wild pitch, and then she was called out leaving the base early. The one pitch. In the dirt, good stop by Rickson to keep uh, Rice put at third base there. Count all even at one ball and one strike. And Wilkerson lifts this one to short center field. That'll drop in. Four base hit. Gets another run in with Rice coming in to score to make it 6 nothing. Allen County Scottsville. RBI there for Wilkerson will be her ninth of the season. Now the third baseman, Hayden Brown. We're at the center field, Joe, to end the first. McCoy with the first pitch of the bat. It misses outside. <laughs> McCoy with the 1-0 pitch. 
And this is low and in. Two balls and no strikes. Brown batting 500 on the year. Two on the way to the eighth grader now, and she rips it into center field. That'll be a base hit. Elmore will get it back onto the infield quickly, but uh, now runners at first and second. Two away. Justin Albrooks will be your hitter. Blue out the center. Just lead off the second. And we're going to have a pinch runner here. We'll make some sort of change, and we will have a uh, pinch runner. It'll be Shiloh Knievel. Run for Shiloh Knievel. Now, he'll run at second base in place of Wilkerson. Here's Addison Albrooks. Albrooks, excuse me. And first pitch to her in there for a call strike. She comes to the plate here in the top of the third inning. Allen County Scotts will lead six to nothing. Burns at first and second for the Lady Patriots. McCoy now delivers the 0-1. Now misses upstairs. It's a slight breeze blowing now from right to left. And this one's going to be popped up into short left field, drifting back and making the catch will be shortstop Ellery Haynes for the third out of the inning. But Allen County Scots will able to add to its lead here in the third as they do get a couple of runs across. It's up two runs or two hits or no errors, and they strand two. We've played two and a half. Allen County Scots still six, Glasgow zero. We'll return after this one-minute timeout on WCOU Sports. We're here with the Shrimp Trio. They're playing a gig at Colton's. Here's fried shrimp. What's up? This is grilled lemon pepper shrimp. Hello, ma'am. And grilled Del Rio shrimp. Howdy, partner. How y'all doing? Get the shrimp trio now at Colton Steakhouse and Grill and enjoy Tangler's rice and a side. Colton Steakhouse and Grill, serving you in Glasgow, Campbellsville, Radcliffe, and Bardstown. We know what's at stake in shrimp, too. Life has a way of presenting us with many inconveniences, but paying your bills shouldn't be one of them. That's why the Glasgow EPB has multiple ways to pay your bill. You can pay your bill online or even sign up for our bank draft program, where your bill will be debited from your bank account on the due date. Pay your bill anytime without having to come into our office at the bill payment kiosk located next to our drive through Did you know you can pay your EPB bill at your bank? And as always, our office and drive through are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The EPB, connecting Glasgow to the future. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. Back here at Glasgow High School, we move to the bottom half of the third inning in this fast pitch softball contest here in 15th District Action. It's Allen County Scottsville with a 6 to nothing lead over Glasgow. And for the Lady Scotties, their 9-1-2 and two hitters are due up. Sydney Kuykendall, Ellery Haynes, and Lucy Richardson. Sydney batting 250 on the year. Her first at bat of the afternoon, Sydney an 8th grader. That's an Osbrooks ready to deliver her first pitch of the inning. I can go showing butt now pulls back, swings away, and foul tips it back into the catcher's love for strike one. The 0 1 now. And a good change up there by Osbrooks had Sydney out in front. Strike two.
Ostrich with the 02, strike three called. Good fastball there. One away here in third. Back to the top of the order for the Lady Scotties. It'll be Ellery Haynes. The third strikeout by Osbrooks reported. He struck out three of the last four, Joe. Ellery flew out to the left field of her first hit. Ellery second on the team with a 357 average. Again, if she gets on the base pass, she is a threat to go. She has six stolen bases on the year. Oh. She'll ground this one just out on the third baseline. Yeah, I believe if it had stayed fair, she had it by the third baseman. I mean, because she didn't seem to get over there that quick. One one to the freshman shortstop for Glasgow. The pitch from Osbrooks is flied to center field and coming in on it, making the catch. Hadley Borders two away. And now the Glasgow catcher Lucy Richardson. Yeah, grounded out to the shortstop. First is that. Lucy leads the team with a 385 average. Yes, today's district day for the 15th district. Yep. Eight, uh, baseball and softball have district games going on all four schools. And this pitch in there for strike one. I noticed that Monroe's hosting both baseball and softball over there, but this game's split. We're we're at home and the boys are on the road. The ball's a one strike to count to Richardson. And that's a jump out of the way of that inside pitch. One and one. Osbrooks with the 1-1 pitch. That one's high. Here's the 2-1. And Richardson gets a piece of that one, fouls it back to the backstop. Richardson walking around a bit, now ready to step back into the box. Balls, two strikes, Osbrooks, Swines, and Fires. And hung on to that change of a bit too long, stays way up there, three and two now. And the payoff pitch from Osbrooks. Grounded to shortstop. Price has it. Or throw to first in plenty of time. And that will end the inning. It's Lady Scotty's go in order here in the third. Yeah, Osbrooks just faced two over the minimum so far. But Scotty's go no runs, no hits, no runs, nobody left. After three complete, Allen County Scottsville six, Glasgow zero. We'll be right back after this one minute. I'm out on WCLU Sports. <laughs> Don Franklin, we're more than a group of car dealerships. We're hardworking, everyday people of Kentucky. We strive daily to give 110% to our customers, our employees, and our families. We are committed to providing everyone with a safe and reliable vehicle. And we continue our tradition of supporting our local community. At all 24 dealerships across Kentucky, we will treat you like family. 
I'm Franklin Family of Dealerships. We are Kentucky. This is Maggie Anderson with the People's Bank. And let me tell you about our People's Checking Account. This account has many features, including free checks, debit card, and online banking with bill pay. If you are traveling, don't worry. We have you covered with four free foreign ATM withdrawals when cash is needed. The People's Bank is a local community bank, and we are working for you. The People's Bank, working for you, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to more sports action on WCLU Radio with Joe Myers. Back at Glasgow High School, it is a 6 nothing lead for Allen County Scottsville here in this 15th District Softball Contest. We go to the top of the uh, fourth inning. And for the Lady Patriots, their nine one and two hitters are due up Danny, uh, Danny Eaton, Hadley Borders, and Bailey Osbrook. Trying to find a few scores here at, uh, during the uh, break. Marion County softball, uh, at last check, leading uh, Monroe County 10 to nothing after two innings of play. So the train continues to roll there for the Trojanettes. They are undefeated on the season. And does not look like that's going to change today. Eaton struck out looking her first at bat. And the first pitch of the evening for Madison McCoy misses outside. She's lined up with her right foot in the river out of the box. Surely it won't be this time. No, it's not there, but when you step on One ball, no strikes. And he turns on this pitch, but fouls it down the third base line. He's a 348 hitter. We talked about Warren East and South Warren being number two and three in the state in this week's uh, coaches poll in softball, and those two teams are playing today, and they are in a scoreless game in the sixth inning. One one pitch outside. Another softball score for you. Hart County leads Caverna 5-1 at the end of the uh, fourth inning. The one pitch is fouled off. Hit well, but foul. Out of play. On the left field side. Two balls, two strikes now to the Lady Patriots. Danny Eaton, eighth grader. Two two from McCoy again lifted foul on a play to the left side. We get another two two pitch coming from Addison McCoy. And this one bounces in front of home plate. The count will go full. Now this will be the seventh pitch. And on the, her first at bat, she looks at the seventh pitch for a call strike. Exact same count as we had in the second inning. She seems to sneak another in by her. Payoff pitch coming. And this going to be fouled off again out of play to the left side. We'll get another 3 2 pitch. It's on the way, and this one, guess what? Bound off to the left side, but that one did stay in play. The Scotties will next be in action on Thursday on the road at Russellville. Russellville got a pretty good softball team this season. Yes, they do. They, well, they had a good softball team yeah, they they had, two years ago. The last time we played, they had 
They had an excellent pitcher. And another foul ball down the uh, left side here. And that leadoff batter they had was so uh, fast. I mean, you know, she, she, she'd take a, a single and turn it into a triple. And I remember she, her pretty she, well. She was shortstop, I believe. She pitched some, too. She was good. So, yet again, another 3-2 pitch coming from Addison McCoy. She tries to get Danny Eaton. And this one will stay in between the lines. Fly ball to left field. It'll be caught out there by Tierra Sawson for out number one. Well, that took 11 pitches, but we got the out. That's, that's, that's what we want. So many times you see the batter win those kind of battles, but uh, McCoy able to come out on top in this one. That'll go back now to the top of the order. Hadley Borders there. Borders tripled, and she lined out to center field to Abby Elmore. Her second at bat for the third out of the second inning. Right. And the pitch here misses. Oh, wow. Was it low, maybe? My goodness. Looks pretty good for my brain. Yeah, it looked wonderful. I was surprised she didn't swing at it because, I mean, it was just, it was that right height that you could drive. The 1 0 on the way. And this is a fly ball to center field and over the head of Elmore out there. Borders on the way to second. She'll be in there with a stand-up double with one away here in the fourth. Her second hit, her second extra base hit. Brings up Bailey Osbrook. Well, Borders, every time she has hit the ball, she has hit oh, right yeah. on the nose. Blind shots. Yep. Yeah, that first one was in the gap, and then the second one that we called, and then that one was... Brooks, Joe singled and then reached third on the era, and then she walked and scored. She let off the third inning with a walk at a stolen base. And she watches the first pitch go by low for ball one. Metcalf County leading Cumberland County 4-1 to one in softball through four innings there. Of course, pitch here going to be grounded in the hole between short and third in the left field. That'll be a base hit. It'll get Borders in to score the seventh run of the day. And as the throw comes on the infield, it went to the wrong spot. It went towards third base, and uh, that allows Osbrook to make it to second. Second hit, second RBI. And another courtesy runner again. It's Addison Law running for all Brooks at second base. Here's the designated player, Jay McReynolds. Triple to RBI, triple in the first. Uh, Grounded to second base in the third inning. And McReynolds tries to uh, bunt, and she then tried to pull back, I think. But did, did she foul that off? I thought I heard it hit the bat. I guess it didn't. No, I don't think it hit the bat. I think she be uh, well, uh, Caleb Crow was asking that same question. She, the home plate, umpire is, uh, home plate umpire is looking over there, shaking his head. I didn't say no, but I heard something, Bruce. I guess it's uh, just ball one. Well, he's, he's saying she went right there to push the bat. I don't know. He, he called a strike now? Or? No, it's a ball. It's one and oh. Jeez. I don't believe he saw it. Here's the one oh pitch from McCoy, and that one misses inside. Wait a minute. He did, he did call that a strike. Wait a minute. He did call that a strike. It's one and one. Well, okay. He's he is, saying she didn't touch it, but it did. It, I reckon. I don't know. Uh, he must have ruled that she did I, not touch it because he, the runner did go from second to third, and here is a foul ball down the first base side. Re- the last motion, he finally he went like that, and I thought, well, and, and apparently he did call it a strike because he said she went like this, that he, she 
pushed the bat that you didn't swing. So I swear I thought I heard it hit the bat, though. But I heard it hit the bat. I heard it hit the wild ball because they allowed the runner to go to second to, from second to third. One ball, two strike, count to McReynolds. And this pitch found back. Still one and two. McCoy's lines and fires. Change up, hits the colonels in the basket. That one just got away from Madison. Well, that one put the McReynolds at first base. Now runners on the corner, still just one away. And here comes the cleanup hitter for ACS, J.C. Rice. He's reached on an error and reached on a fielder's choice. Scored two runs. Right. Rice batting 407, taking a while to get into the box, and uh, as she does, Addison McCoy steps off the pitching rubber. Now everybody's set. And the fastball lifted in the air to right field, coming in on his Kuykendall, and she'll make the catch for out number two. Burner tags from third base. And it's Law coming in to score the eighth run of the day for ACS. It's now eight to nothing. And now the second baseman, Taylor Gregory. Gregory's doubled, Harvey out double, and then she flew out to Kuykendall in right field, her last at bat. And this ball laced in the left center field. That's going to be a one hopper to the fence out there. ACS going to send the runner around third base, coming in to score the ninth run of the day for the Lady Patriots is Jay McReynolds. And Gregory winds up at second base with an RBI double. Daisy Wilkerson, the hitter. Two outs on the board, but already three runs in here in the fourth for ACS. They lead it nine to nothing. Wilkerson popped out the short and had a single into the left center field gap for the last at bat. This pitch is striped. Senior bats 526 on the year, has a couple of home runs. And the last, you heard, the last couple of batters have been going on that first pitch. They've been swinging on that first pitch. Here's the 01 from McCoy. And this is low. One ball, one strike. The eighth grader fires away, and that one calls strike two. Wow. See if McCoy can get Wilkerson here. One, two pitch. And that's one found back. Another one two pitch coming. This one's gonna be grounded between short and third into left field. And ACS gonna score their tenth run. Just coming in to score from second base is Taylor Gregory. It's now ten nothing led the Patriots. And that will bring up Hayden Brown. 
You know, she's one for two, flew to center field and singled in the third. Wilkerson on at first base after that single. RBI single. Fourth hit of the inning. They matched the first. Four runs and four hits. And a hard ground ball right at the third baseman, Gardner. She'll play it off one hop over the first base. Good play that time by Emery Gardner. That one was hit well, but the eighth grader took care of it and gets the third out of the inning. But another big inning for ACS to get four more on the board, and they now have a big lead. Yeah, they picked up four runs, Joe. They had four hits. There were no errors. They did strand one. After three and a half now, it's ACS 10, the Scotty Zero. We'll be right back after this one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. There's a driver who's had his right turn signal on for two miles, then proceeds to turn left. There's the one who's convinced a yellow light means speed up, and the one who's taken up permanent residence in your blind spot. No wonder so many Kentuckians carry Kentucky Farm Bureau insurance, because sometimes the best protection against Drivers is good insurance. Kentucky Farm Bureau. Come see me, Joe Myers, at 106 Road Road in Glasgow, or call me at 670-3093. We're celebrating. This is Cynthia Watson with Monticello Bank, and this year we celebrate our 125th anniversary. Since 1895, we've dedicated ourselves to providing premier financial products and superior customer service. The same dedication to superior service that has made us successful in 1895 is still with us today. But our success could not be possible without you, our faithful customers. So we thank you and hope you will join us in celebrating our 125th anniversary. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC. Welcome back to more sports action on WCLU Radio with Joe Myers. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning here at uh, Rigdon Kaiser Field at Bush Stadium. It's a 10 0 lead for Allen County Scottsville. And the three, four, five hitters do have for Glasgow. That's Emory Gardner, Addison McCoy, and Heidi Jackson. Emory made an outstanding play to end the uh, top of the fourth. Emory popped out to left field her first at bat. Addison Brooks still out there for the Lady Patriots. She has gone the distance. And her first pitch, a pass ball in the dirt. And just giving up one hit. Struck out three and walked one. You know, that was her 45th pitch here. So. He's just a seventh grader out there in the pitching circle. Pitching to an eighth grader in Gardner. All right. He's on, the coaches can sit in the doorway, but once the player's inside the dugout, what he was stopping it right there. Here's the 1 0. Osbrook misses high with this one. <laughs> 2 0 to Gardner. Osbrooks toes the rubber and fires away, and that one upstairs as well, 3 0. Time called as the catcher Bailey Osbrooks goes out to talk to Addison Osbrooks. That'll give Emory a chance to go down and talk with Glasgow head coach Caleb Crow. Would think Emory would be taking here on 3 0. <laughs> And the pitch on the way. That one misses low and inside, so a four-pitch walk to Gardner. Both of her walks have been four-pitch walks. That brings up the Glasgow cleanup hitter, Addison McCoy. Let off the second inning with a hit into right center field. McCoy has gone the distance today for the Lady Scotties in the pitching circle. Yeah, that's our only hit so far. Osprey starts her off with a strike.
The 0-1 on the way. McCoy shows bunt, lays it down the third base line, but it goes foul. I got that bat head dropped just a little too much. Just... Let's go trying 10 to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. Leadoff off here in the inning, Emory Gardner drew a walk. He's down to first base. Osbrook's way ahead in the count here at oh, no balls and two strikes. Her pitch on the way, and McCoy grounds it foul down the third base line. Still on 0-2 count. The pitch is a little soft pop-up on the infield. It's caught by the shortstop Rice. Her throw to first base gets away, and that's going to allow Gardner to take second on that throwing error. Early sir, committed by the Lady Patriots. Here's Glasgow Jr., Heidi Jackson. This is the second time today the Lady Scotties have had a runner in scoring position. See if they can take advantage. Heidi drew a base on balls, her first at bat. And she'll ground it back to the pitcher, Osbrooks, who takes a look at Gardner, but she'll allow her to go to third base and just get the out at first. Two down with Gardner at third. Yeah, I mean, she had plenty of time because it got to her quick, but she looked at second like she was looking the runner back. And the, runner, the runner was gone. <laughs> Here's Abigail Moore. Abby struck out looking her first at bat, Joe. On a 2-2 pitch. Abby's made a couple outstanding catches out in center field today. Yes, she has. She's been the defensive star so far. Cause she's had, had more runs than they do. And the first pitch from Osbrook misses upstairs. Here's the 1 0. That one high as well. Yeah, there's nothing high. No more heading the count. Two balls, no strikes. Osbrooks with the pitch. That one's in the dirt. Good stop by the catcher, Bailey Osbrooks. Three and up. Alana Hewitt waiting on deck. 3-0 pitch is low for ball four. Oh, boy, they almost picked off Garner down there at third base. As the catcher, Osbrooks, threw down, and if that catch is made by the third baseman, Hayden Brown, she is probably going to be out. But as it stands, it's ball four. So now runners on the corners, and Alana Hewitt will come to the plate. Two away. Yeah, we were fortunate because the ball was right there yeah. for the tag. I yeah. mean, it just, you know. I think mean, Coach is reminding me right there. We, you know, we got a person on third. Let's don't get sick off. Fastball grounded to shortstop. Rice has it. And she'll go to first base for the out. So for the second time today, the Lady Scotties will strand two runners on the base pads, and they're still being shut out, 2-4. Joe, there were no runs. There were no hits. There were no errors. They strand two. We completed four here at Glasgow High School, and it's Allen County, Scottsville, 10, Glasgow 0. We'll return after this one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. So wake up early, do a little studying, take the dog out, finish that audio book until the very Finish that workout, then stop by McDonald's for breakfast and somehow manage to do it all before that 10 a.m. meeting meal. 
there's a meal for every morning at McDonald's. Pair our delicious hash browns with the sweet and savory taste of a sizzling sausage McGriddles or a crispy chicken McGriddles for only $2. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. SCRTC is a family. Your family. We come from your community. SCRTC is dedicated to providing the most up-to-date services for over 70 years now. SCRTC fiber technology is constantly expanding, offering up to one gig of internet speed. We started with phone and still provide reliable services for residential and large businesses. We offer over 125 TV channels and provide security, surveillance, remote entry, and managed Wi-Fi. SCRTC continues to grow and make our community better. Call SCRTC today and let us serve your family and business. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM and 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. Alongside Bruce Camus, I am Joe Myers here at Glasgow High School. We go to the top of the fifth inning here in Fast Pitch Softball in 15th District Action. Allen County Scottsville leads Glasgow 10 to nothing. And it'll be a pinch hitter to lead things off for ACS here in the fifth. It's going to be Aubrey Williams batting in place of Addison Osbrooks. So we will see if uh, Osbrooks returns. 37's on deck, too, Joe. That would be a pinch hitter also, Allie that Smith. That would be Allie Smith. These are the eight, nine, and one hitters in the order. Hadley Borders would be the uh, third hitter due up if they don't pinch hit for her. This McCoy about to start her fifth inning of work in the pitching circle for Glasgow. And her fastball misses low and in. The one over from McCoy. That one a bit low. Two o pitch here. And that one's upstairs. Well, you ever get a baseball score? That's what I'm just looking for. Yep. In uh, the middle of the sixth inning, Glasgow was leading Allen County Scottsville eight to three. It was about 15 minutes or so ago. That one's probably over unless Allen scored a bunch of runs in, didn't it? Well, it's just the middle of the sixth, so could be over. I don't know. Well, yeah, they'd have two at bat. Wouldn't yeah. They? And this one's going to be popped off or popped out of play, I should say. It's probably not over there. Three balls and one strike to Williams, who was swinging away on 3-0 and with that last pitch. Doug's got a nice win on the road yesterday. He lifts down usually a pretty good ball club. And this pitch which is high, so Williams will draw the leadoff walk here to start the fifth. And we do have another pinch hitter for ACS. It will be Allie Smith hitting in place of Danny Eaton. And we just inserted a pinch runner there at first base as well. I can't pick up the number. You think that's seven? Yeah, it looks like it. That would be Anderson? That would be Allie Anderson, if that's who it is. Yeah, that's right. It is number seven. So here is Allie Smith at the plate with her first at bat of the day. And here's a line drive caught by the shortstop Haynes, and she'll go to first base. And it is a double play and a good dig over there by Alana Hewitt. That ball was in the dirt. She was able to dig it out for the double play. And so we will now go back to the top of the Lady Patriots order with Hadley Borders. Borders. Borders had a good day. Yes, she has, Joe. She's... 2-3, had a triple and a double, scored two runs. 
He laughed this one into right center field. That'll be a base hit all the way to the fence. And another double coming here. They will hold her up at second base. And again, Borders just every time she hits the softball, it is a line drive somewhere. Yeah, well, yeah, because the one that, that Abby called, Abby Elmore out in center field, was a line shot. Or she'd be four for four. She has uh, three extra base hits. Here's a catcher, Bailey Osbrooks. She is two for two. She's had two singles, two RBIs, walked, scored three times. Well, she didn't score. A pinch runner scored for Addison Law. Osbrooks will foul this first pitch off out of play into the Allen County Scottsville. Mm -hmm. Fans over here on and first base see, Coach McReynolds wasn't quite as brave on that one. That had a little more steam on it, I believe. Brad Bonds comes down to have a quick word with the uh, Moss Brooks. It's one of these deals. I mean, it's a coaching moment, but you're up 10 to nothing, and I don't, we haven't even hardly threatened to score. <laughs> You're always coaching. Yeah, I realize that, but I, I believe you could make a little mental note and tell her to stay. <laughs> Here's the 01 pitch, and this one's going to be a home run. Yeah, what are you no about? doubt about that. You could tell as soon as it left the bat that that thing was going to waste no time getting out of here. That is home run number two on the year for Bailey Osbrooks. And that will make it a 12 to nothing lead. It's a two run shot as Borders is on at second base. Just he told her to keep her hands back. <laughs> Whatever he told her, it was good advice. He's three for four with four RBI on the day. Now 19 RBI on the season and lead the team. And that will bring up the designated player, the senior, Jay McReynolds. He is one for two. Crippled uh, and hit by a pitch. He scored two runs. It's from the left side, and she watches the first pitch from McCoy go by for ball one, low and away. Here's the 1 0. And this is a uh, soft line drive. It'll be caught by Haynes out there at shortstop, and that will end the inning. But the two run shot by Osbrooks now forces Glasgow to score at least three runs in the bottom of the fifth to continue playing. Oh, so they picked up two runs. They had two hits. There were no errors. And it's probably starting to double play. And nobody left on. After four and a half, the Patriots, Lady Patriots 12, it's got easy. Bro. We'll be right back after this one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hi, I'm Owen Lamb, president of South Central Bank. Whether you're looking for a conventional mortgage, an FHA, or a VA loan, or even a construction loan, or just a loan for that home improvement project you've been thinking about, South Central Bank is ready to help. We have experienced lenders who are here to walk you through every step of the way. You can even even start the process online at southcentralbank.com. At South Central Bank, we're small enough to know you and big enough to help. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. <laughs> That daily grind stuck in an office was never for you. You needed an office that moved, preferably one with 18 wheels, and where the path through the break room changes every day. You're a truck driver. It's in your blood, and you are exactly who we're looking for. Wahlberg Trucking. If you have a Class A CDL license, then we want you. Great pay with a great company and an office view that changes by the minute. Check us out at GoWahlberg.com. For information, text CDL to 64636. And now, back to more great softball action on WCLU Radio, 1490 AM at 103.1 FM. Here's Joe Myers. 
Back here at Glasgow High School, where the Lady Patriots of Allen County Scots will have a 12 nothing lead over Glasgow in 15th district action as we go to the bottom of the 15th inning. Glasgow must score at least three runs here to avoid uh, the 10 run rule through five. And it'll be Micah Mullenkamp, Sidney Kuykendall, and Ellery Haynes, the first three hitters due up. At 8 9 and 1 in the Glasgow order. The Scotty baseball team scored five runs in the top of the seventh inning, and they now lead Allen County Scottsville 13 to three. And actually, the top of the seventh apparently is still going on. So Lasco may put a few more runs up. Either way, Scotty's with a big lead in baseball in Scottsville. First pitch, Mullen can't misses for ball one. It's an off Brooks with the 1 0 and a swing miss by Mullen Kemp. Another 1 1. This is up and away. Two one, and that drills Mullen Camp right in the left hip. So he will go to first base after being hit by the pitch. And now Glasgow eight quarter Sidney Kuykendall will step in. Struck out looking her first hit. Yeah. Osbrook swans and fires, and that pitch misses upstairs. Glasgow right fielder batting 250 on the year coming into today's action. Here's the 1 0. Like and all, we're grounded to third base. Brown has it. She'll go to second for the out there. So one away is Kuykendall reaches on the fielder's choice. And now back to the top of the order, Ellery Haynes will be your hitter. Oh, for two. By the way, we do want to thank uh, again the Glasgow Liquor Plant Board for sponsoring today's first pitch. Glasgow Liquor Plant Board is a proud sponsor of Glasgow Scotty Sports. First pitch to Haynes in there for a call strike. Hockendall takes off for second base, and he's in there safely. Not the most graceful slide that time by Sydney, but she is in there safely. Waited a little bit too late to slide, but uh, style points don't matter. You know whether or not you get there, and she did. <laughs> the pitch to Haynes was called a strike, so 0-1 to her. Angel ground this back up the middle. It's off the glove of the pitcher, Osbrooks. It'll be good by the second baseman, Gregory, behind the bag a second, but he will not get the speedy Haynes. And now Glasgow with runners on the corners with one away. And their best hitter coming up in Lucy Richardson. By the way, that stolen base for Sidney Kuykendall a moment ago was her second of the year in as many tries. What's Lucy done today so far, Bruce? Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, she is 0 for 2. Grounded to short, both at bats. She's due for a hit right here. 385 hitter on the season. Osbrooks with the pitch, and Richardson hits it hard, but foul down the third base line. No balls and one strike to Lucy. Off Brooks with the pitch. 
And that one misses upstairs, and Ames will steal second base. The throw to second gets away, and that will allow Eichendahl to come in and score the first run of the day for the Lady Scotties. Haynes winds up at third. So she had stolen base, went to third on the throwing error of the catcher. That's a second error by the... I just got to get her in. Well, they got to get the battery two in. More. Yeah, they got to get, get two more runs more. across to keep playing here. Blasco is on the board, though, now turning 12-1 to 1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Haynes over at third. And a one-ball, one-strike count to Lucy Richardson. And this one misses way upstairs. It's now two balls and a strike. Off Brooks ready to deliver the 2 1. And this one is going to be a base hit into center field, so Richardson will get an RBI as Haynes comes in in to score. Now 12 to 2. Back to back hits, Joe. And now the third baseman, Emory Gardner, will hit the play. She's 0 for 1. She uh, flew out to left field and walked to lead off the fourth. Pitch from Moss Brooks is upstairs for ball one. The one on the way. That one in there for a call strike. Throw down to first base is going to get away. Richardson going to take second. Osbrook's trying to pick her off after the pitch down there at first base, but uh, that was uh, first base and missed it. Yeah, so yeah, drop it. I, I would say that's more of an error on the first base than the catcher. Three. That would be Wilkerson with the error. Well, right now. Allen County has committed more errors than Scotty's. We had two in the first inning, and they've just hit the ball. And when we got that, keep the game alive, runner at second. And here is a fly ball into short center field coming in and making the catch is Hadley Borders. And there's two away. So Glasgow down to their final out here. And the pitcher, Addison McCoy, comes to the play. Boy. Joe, she had her first hit of the game, so she's uh, won uh, once or two. Single in the right field, her first at bat, right center. Fastball from Osbrooks, fouled off out of play to the right side. The old one on the way. And that one in the dirt and going to get to the backstop. Well, that will move Richardson over to third base. 60 feet away. A base hit, a wild pitch, an error. This game will go on. The one ball, one strike count to McCoy. Oh, and it is. That was probably was going to be ball two. Yeah. She, at least she needed a seven iron or something. Yeah, sort of skip that one over in the infield, didn't she? Down and in right there, be sure. What about the Masters yesterday, Joe? Did you watch any of that? I watched the entire, almost the entire tournament. I watched all day Sunday. Now the one, two. And another swing and a miss, and that will do it. So, Lady Scotties will fall here in five innings to Allen County Scottsville by a final score of 12 to 2. Lady Patriots improved to 8 and 3 on the year. They go to 1 and 1 in district play. Lady Scotties will drop to 1 and 5 overall and 0 and 1 
in the district. Joe, here in the fifth inning, the Scotties had two hits. They had two runs. There were two errors, and they strand one. We'll come back in a moment uh, with the Don Franklin Auto postgame wrap-up. Again, your final score, Glasgow Falls 12-2 to Allen County Scottsville here in 15th District Action. We're back after a three-minute timeout here on WCOD Sports. This has been Glasgow Softball on WCLU-1590 AM and 103.1 FM and online at WCLUradio.com. A production of WCLU Sports. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Monticello Bank, the Glasgow...